This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and discord servers, on screen shout outs and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. Right, we're gonna get into film room and break down Deshaun Watson's week four performance. And before we even get into the nuts and bolts of this performance, I wanna say that this is a very, very encouraging performance from Deshaun Watson, right? We talked about some of the stuff that he needed to improve. Well, he showed improvement there. I saw somebody in this game who was more comfortable going through his progressions than we had ever seen him in Cleveland. Like, I understand that. The Raiders defense isn't great. They were missing some guys and that's going to cause a bit of a muted response to this performance from Watson, given also what the last, what, two out of three games have been for Deshaun. I do believe this performance is a lot more encouraging than any other good performance that he has had so far this year or any good moment that he had this year. Um, some things to note that are important. I know a lot of people got mad when I said this, but it's just objectively true. The Browns offensive line did play a lot better this week. Um, on average, the last three weeks, the Browns have kept Deshaun Watson clean on 55% of his dropbacks. This week, it was 62. That's a plus 7% improvement of him being clean. That's the cleanest he's been kept all season at 62%. I think it showed. Um, what Week one, it was at 57%. Week two, it was at 52%. Week three, it was at 55 So getting it to 62% here, really good improvement for the offensive line given all the injuries that they were dealing with i believe the tight end that they brought in to be the blocking tight end is really making a difference i want to highlight him in the film review just a little bit because i think he does a really good job here um another note deshaun watson was excellent when being blitzed this week he's coming off of a performance last week where he had a 44 pff grade this week he had an 86 pff grade while being blitzed and that was his highest individual grade when pressured when blitzed when kept clean he was at his best when he was being blitzed so he was doing a better job of diagnosing a blitz knowing where it's coming and then replacing the blitzer with the football. So great job there. You're going to see a ton of that in this film had three big time throws when being blitzed to zero turnover worthy plays. His pressure to sack percentage dropped dramatically. I mean, we were talking about it being North of 30. It was at 18.8 intermediate passing much much better six of seven for 77 yards had a 57 percent first down rate on intermediate passes passes from 10 to 19 yards this was sitting at an abysmal percentage before this game he got that up significantly for this game if you remember my keys to the browns being able to run an offense that's successful this was a huge part of it, right? When he held the ball 2.5 seconds or longer, he had a 86.7 PFF grade this week. That was good enough for third um, in the NFL. And his pressure to sack rate, most importantly, when he held the ball for more than two and a half seconds, was down to 22.1. It was at 30%, which was just too high. But getting it down to 22 is a significant improvement. We're talking about an 8% improvement there. Um, score percentage for the team was at 22 that's not a great number they scored on two of their nine drives for watson specifically i'm going to give him a bit of a break here i think he did enough to score on the omari cooper interception play i think he did enough to score on the nick harris hold play and also i think he did enough to score at the end of the game i'm not really going to hold those three situations against him if the browns score on those drives, you're talking about the Browns scoring on five of their nine drives, and you're having a very, very good score percentage. So on all the metrics that I was worried about Watson coming into the first three weeks of the season, could he perform those going forward? He blew them out the water this week, which is a very encouraging sign. I think how he did it, too, is even more encouraging. So let's look at the film. But we're going to see something on this first play that we're, we saw all game with Watson, right? See that? See, it's simple, it's small. He doesn't really even make a great play on this one. But look at that. We have not seen him do that all season. We've not seen him do that in a Browns uniform. One, two, okay, I got to do something, right? Getting through his progressions and then also being alert. 
I've seen him take this sack a lot this season, but this time he feels that linebacker coming down on him. He knows that opens something up. He trusts Jerry Judy to be in that spot. He throws it, boom, first down. That's significantly better processing, just in that one play than anything we saw last week. All right, let's keep it going. This is what I want from him, right? Top is dropped. Yes, there's pressure in his face. But you see that you have that cross in the middle of the field with Elijah Moore. You know that once he crosses Spillane, you're going to have that second window. You might not have time to wait and see it happen, but you do have time to anticipate it. So set your feet before he's even in that window and throw it in that window. Trust him to get it. Boom. That's still Elijah Moore. That's what I've been wanting, right? I understand you're getting pressured. I understand you're getting blitzed, but you know, there are still avenues to get out of it. And then if you hit on those, you're going to really negate the amount of times the Raiders are going to want to blitz you because if you're successful versus the blitz, they're going to blitz you less. And I think that's part of the reason why he had a much higher kept clean percentage on his passes because the Raiders decided to stop blitzing him after a while because he kept killing them on it. Right here, again, another one. He processed the blitz quickly. They sunk five on him, six on him, right? Four on one side, two on the other. And he recognized that immediately. He sees that the linebacker on the right shoulder of his right tackle comes in. He realizes Spillane is still holding curl flat. And you just throw this thing into the flat because he's not going to beat him there. And then, boom, you let your uh, athletes make a play in space. You beat the blitz. They're not going to do it as much. So this is this play right here. This is one you could nitpick if you wanted to. But the reason I'm not interested in nitpicking this one, because he made a decision and he just rolled with it. Right. The times where I get frustrated with Watson watching him this year specifically is when he's not decisive, when he's not making a decision. It's one thing if you make the right decision or the best decision possible. Um, it's another one. It's another thing if you're not making a decision and you're kind of just making the offensive line's job worse because you're still taking some time in the process there when you should just be making a decision for your team here. So this one right here, I think Watson does a great job. He, for whatever reason, he doesn't want, like that out, right? For uh, Jordan, not Jordan Atkins, right? He doesn't like that. I don't get why he doesn't like it. I think it's fine to throw, but he doesn't like it for whatever reason, right? But... He doesn't waste time here. He decides he doesn't like it, and he just gets the hell out of there. And it's fine. Nobody cares that you, that you didn't get it because you get the first down on the next play. So that's what I like the most from this game. He was decisive. Does he make the best decision every time he dropped back? No. No quarterback's going to make the absolute perfect decision every time they drop back unless their name is Tom Brady, and that's only when Tom Brady plays extremely well. Um, but what you do want your quarterback to be is decisive. If you're going to make a decision, go for it, right? Because you could do more with a decisive wrong decision than you can with a indecisive kind of right decision. So love that he was decisive there. All right, this is next level anticipation here by Deshaun. Like it's just a stark difference from week three to week four. Look how he just anticipates Jerry Judy here in this spot. He sees it. He knows he's going to have that window. Let's throw it. Boom. Gets it to him in that window. Gets him a nice ball, a ball that he could catch and run with. Look how he doesn't have to see it be open, right? He just sees, okay, he has that space. That's where the linebacker is. Let me pull it tight there, bam. And then you give him space to run afterwards, and he picks up a couple extra yards. Great job there by Watson. Great job by Judy. They really have some chemistry going, both of them. This one right here, the offensive line gave him all the time in the world to let this one develop. <laughs> um, like, we could count it because this is play action. And he still gets three seconds even after the play action. But we could count it from snap. I mean, this is well past five, uh, three seconds. It's like six seconds he gets here. And he does a good job using that time. He's waiting for this, uh he's waiting for this end to come open down the field. So let me show you that. He's waiting for this end to come open down the field. And he can because he has good protection and a lot of time here, he can actually wait for this third window to pop up. Um which is just good job by the offensive line and Jerome Ford picking up here. So he picks up chips. I mean, you got time here, right? This is counted right here. See how much time the old line gives him.
and then he does a good job. Look, there wasn't much there. Maybe he could have hit the middle of the field with a nice little seam shot there, but I don't blame him for not wanting to try to split those safeties. It's really high risk. It doesn't need, you don't think you need that right there. I like the decision to roll out late. See if you have that deep in and then throw it, and then you got him. It's a good decision. Good job by the O-line here. This one, Coop ran the wrong route, right? I think Jake Burns went through it on Twitter. I agree with him um, in how he went through it. Yeah, I think Coop ran the wrong route. It's basically what I believe is supposed to happen here. So you have a out, well, a post, not a post. Yeah, a post. And then a nine, right? And maybe this is supposed to be like a little bit of a sluggo. But it's supposed to be a nine. The idea is to put this safety in conflict, make him choose. And then if that's a one-on-one, -on -one, you take it downfield um, because you trust your guys here. So the spacing on that would make it seem like that was the concept. Um, I don't know why Amari Cooper cuts this over here. Yeah, I don't know. Unless that's a bad route by Judy. And Judy was supposed to run this as a in. I don't see how the concept there would allow for Amari Cooper to cut that to the corner. So don't love that. Right. Again, another missed opportunity here. Because Amari just runs that nine, that probably scores. Right here, give him a lot of time. Look at the time here for Watson, right? And unfortunately, what happens is Amari Cooper has a awful, awful rep here. Now, again, we can look at this. Offensive line gives Deshaun plenty of time. So it's not their fault for this play. Look at that. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five. Oh, you got plenty of time there. Good job by the offensive line. Give you plenty of time. I mean, he's not even under duress when he lets go of this. I think the issue here is Amari Cooper. One, Amari Cooper runs a weak route here, right? This one goes up to the chest. It just takes too damn long, right? Like he fakes the end, comes back, and then comes back out to fake the end. Just get to the damn spot. You see Watson, he's like, why is he taking so long? Look at Watson. He has to pat. He's, he knows it's going to be open. But look, Amari's just taking too long. Pat, pat. Okay, he's he finally did it. Right. He's expecting him to do it when he faked it. Right. But he's almost faking out his quarterback here. So like that, that route at the top is just too much at the top there. Got to cut that one out. Way too much shit he's doing at the top of this route. And then Deshaun still powers a ball through wide open to him. You know, you got the space and time to get away with it. It's a little bit tighter than it needed to be, but it hits your chest in the middle of the field. You know what that means. You can't let balls fall off of your chest in the middle of the field. It's going to turn into bad stuff. Interception. Okay, so this one, minor complaint. Jerry Judy tags him here. And given the chemistry these guys have, um, I just want Watson to trust it because he was right there. So he tags his man. He's saying basically, hey, alert, alert, look at me, look at me. I'm going to be open. I don't blame Watson's eyes for being on the left side here. Um, it's just he didn't have an answer on that side for a blitz, right? Because if he felt like the blitz was coming there, he just didn't have an answer on that side. So it kind of just left them no man's land. But Jerry Judy gave him an answer. It's just he wasn't, he didn't see it. Would have been a nice play to make here. But it's not the biggest deal in the world, given how many times he made plays in this game. 
All right. Now we saw a bad rep between Coop and Watson. Let's see a great rep between Coop and Watson here, right? Watson gets to the top of his drop. Nothing's there. He feels pressure over top. He's kind of, he, he's fine if he just stays there, right? Um, and he could dump this thing off to the tight end who's open in the flat, but he sees something, right? He sees something over on this side. He knows he has Amari Cooper working across field. And he notices that, hey, look, if he's going this way, he's over top. This guy's here. This guy's here. And if I roll this way, this, this corner's probably going to roll up to that tight end. So I'm going to watch him, right? If this guy starts to cheat up to that tight end, then Amari's going to be wide open here, the way you can manipulate the field. And this is a great job. It's intentional by Deshaun. He does do this this way. So he does deserve a lot of credit for it. Amari deserves a lot of credit for recognizing this too and running through it. But Deshaun recognizes this. He sees the corner bite. And then the, the second he sees that corner bite to the tight end, boom, he launches this thing, gets hit while throwing it, launches a dime to Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper catches it in space. That thing is seven, just like you drew it up. And it would have won the damn game. Wouldn't be here talking about Amari Cooper's bad reps if that play would have just been legal. Unfortunately, you get a hold here by Nick Harris. Now, look, this was a very debatable hold um, that they called on Nick Harris. To be fair to him, um, I don't think ever I don't think that gets called most times, but it got called on him, and he does technically hold. Right. When he breaks, you see that arm right there. He did not let go immediately. And you can make the argument if he doesn't hold that little second there. Deshaun doesn't get that time to throw the ball. You can make that argument. It's just unfortunate. That's how things broke out. That's it. It's just unfortunate. That's how things had to break out for this game. All right. So I want to know if you guys noticed this because I noticed this while watching the film a lot. Look how Deshaun like has to beg for this snap the whole game. He was doing this whenever Nick Harris was in the game, like whatever was going on. Nick Harris did not understand what the cadence was. So he's like begging for the ball. This happens so much at the end of this game, um, especially when Nick Harris is in. So that's the first thing. Second thing, Jerry Judy, I catch that. That's right to you. That would have been a big play, too. Um, Joe Batonio, I think he's got to sell this one a little bit better here. So I think this is a slip. Joe doesn't sell the fake well enough, which kind of gives his man antennas to where this play is going. So right here, it just doesn't commit to selling it. Right, just want him to commit a half a second longer. Let Jerome Ford pass. Right, let him pass. And then let go. But he's just a hair early. And that keys off this this uh DN instead of letting him continue to go upfield to try to get that safety. And oh man, if that end is not there, if you just hold it a little if you just hold him just a little bit longer to sell the fake, I mean this thing goes for a huge play here. Oh, that thing would have went. 19. I get what he's thinking here, right? What he's thinking here is that he can get a big play to Jerry Judy if he just throws his ball perfectly. I don't love this decision in this situation because this is third and three on a half to have it drive. You're down a score. Just get the first down and move on with the game. But this was second and three. I wouldn't have a problem with it. But third and three, I do think it's a, it's a bad decision. Right. So what he tries to do, he has Judy on that corner. Right. This is basically a bench concept on the left side. High low. And he, to his credit, he throws a good ball. And I don't know if he thought the safety was going to do something different. But if you see that safety or you think that safety's there, this you can't throw this one. It's just too dangerous. Um the the percentage of this place is too low. And the percentage of something could go wrong on this play is too high, right? That's double covered up in the corner. We're not talking about the end zone here where the ball can just bounce out a multitude of ways. We're talking about relatively 
in play most this play most this uh this ball is going to land more than likely if it gets tipped or something so you don't have the comfort of this being in the end zone it's a well thrown ball while getting hit got to give him credit for that and it has a chance to be completed which is almost immaculate here but even this is why it's such a low percentage play even if you throw this ball perfectly you you're expecting your wide receiver to survive a sandwich here like you're just throwing him into a machine and that's what happens he doesn't hold on to it just too low percentage um and that's not what the design of the play was for in that situation now i would love to know why he got off of uh, elijah moore here because it looked like he had Elijah Moore available in the flat on the out. Right underneath for the first down. Because you see Jack Jones there, number 18. You get him where you want him. It's man coverage. And you know that the Mark, I mean, not Mari, but Elijah Moore is fast. So he's going to beat him to the spot. And that's where Deshaun's eyes are. I don't know why he got off of him. Maybe he didn't trust it. But you see the separation there by Elijah Moore. He gets it. Maybe he thought there was no safety over top, and that was just one-on-one. -on -one. And if he just threw a good ball to Jerry Judy, that could score. But just would have liked if he just went for the high percentage stuff, which was getting that thing to Elijah Moore and moving the game forward. Just a bit too high percentage in that situation for me. Um, right here, just more chemistry with him and Jerry Judy. Look at that. Well, steps up, beautiful, anticipates it. Got him. Nice. 21 here. I have blocking written up for this one. This is the run play for Jerome Ford. And then look at the blocking here downfield. Um, I think Amari Cooper does a great job blocking here. Bam. What a way to set up on that, Mari. Let's, let's zoom in on that. Mari Cooper had a lot of issues this game, but he did a good job on this one. Boom, sets up. I think Jerome Ford does a great job of not just squeezing through that hole, right, but staying on his feet because look at that big, big defensive end, got his hooks on him. Stays on his feet, maintains his north point. Amari Cooper sets up a great block, bam. And you're able to blow through that gap and then get a big play here. Great job by Jordan Akins, too. That's a huge play. Huge play. All right, let's go through the last section of this game. Last section of this game right here. After begging for the snap all game, for whatever reason, Nick Harris decides to just snap this ball. Don't know why. Maybe there was a reason. Maybe there wasn't. I'm sure we'll get an explanation sooner than later. But this right here completely changes the drive. Completely changes the drive. Because now you're in a first and 10, right? You got about a minute and 30 left, I believe, in this game at this point. So you got a first and 10. All you need to do is get it here. You could just run this thing. You get like four or five yards here. You can run it again, get like the three yard there. You talk about a third and three, two downs to get it, take a shot at the end zone maybe because they're going to be teched in the middle of the field. And then, you know, it just, it changes so much when you have this happen. It makes the Raiders life a lot easier than it needed to be here. And I think this really, this really hurt the Browns in more ways than one. It just really killed them right here. You can't have a mistake like this happen. Two weeks in a row, they've had one happen. Uh, the fumbled snap by Jerome Ford on a what felt like it was going to be a game-winning drive. This one here, similar energy. And then you get a you get a setback like that. Now, luckily, you get on top of it. You get a chance to at least make something happen. But you just can't have that happen. Because now you're in the second and 16. Now you can't run the ball anymore. Because if you run it, you get six yards, you're in a third and 10, right? Now you got to throw both times here. Second and 16 on this play. It's really unfortunate because you get the out here to Jordan Atkins. It's there. Oh, but you get that finger in the way. Like that, 
the defensive lineman just gets his hands up. Oh, he got lucky. Because right there, you can see Aikens wide open. That's where that ball's going. And you could turn the corner, maybe get the first down, potentially score. I mean, you pretty much negate that. But defensive end makes a play here. They get paid to. Shuts that down. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Right? It's there, right decision, good timing on a throw. It, pesky DN just gets his hands in the way. Like that's the decision to make there. Right here, now it's third and 16. Now you got to get 16 and two plays here. Drop here, decision, good job, good throw to Amari Cooper. At least you make it competitive here with the fourth and three. So good job bouncing back here by Watson. Now this one, there was a bit of a mini controversy. I don't know. I, I I think people kind of just went off the TV angle on this one. So you get a blitz and Watson's eyes are on his left hand side. And I think that's right. What a lot of people are pointing out is that Jerry Judy does pop open here. And that's true. Jerry Judy is open. Um, but as much as I love anticipatory passing, <laughs> as much as I think Watson needed to improve that in the first three weeks of the season, him anticipating this in this situation is kind of absurd. Um, not Let's not even mention the pressure. Like the guys are in his face already immediately here. But him anticipating this is crazy. The reason I think it's crazy is, one, think about the situation. The Browns have no timeouts. It is fourth and three. And I believe there's 40 seconds left in the game. So you know if you don't get this fourth down conversion, even if you had three timeouts, I believe the Browns had to use a timeout here. But even if you had three timeouts, what? You you get lucky, you don't convert, you stop them on three plays, they use up about, what, 24 seconds at the very least, probably a lot longer than that um, because they're just going to run plays, they're going to take longer to take time off the clock. You're talking about getting the ball back with like 15 seconds. There, there's no way to win the game like that. I know the play-by-play -play said that there was a chance to win the game like that, but... There was no way to win the game like that. You were going to have to win the game right here. What you did not want to do because you don't have all that extra time is just think about the is. So that's the situation the Browns were in. Um, and when they're sending this much pressure to you, you think you're going to have some options here on the outside because look at where this pressure is, right? It's all on the left hand side. You know you have a bunch down there, or at least a stack down there, right? You got a tight end, and you got a Mari Cooper combo. You know you can have potentially numbers on that side if the safety goes. Now, I think they probably rotated this blitz and brought the other safety instead of the uh, free safety here. And that opened up Jerry Judy. But again, anticipating that is a bit of a stretch here for Watson. What he could have done, and I think the only option on this play was just give Akins, I mean Atkins, a 50-50 ball. Right? Because Atkins has his corner. Look, this would have been hard as hell to make. It's not close to a guarantee. But you do have a chance here to make this throw with Akins. Atkins, my bad. I keep mispronouncing his name. I'm, my apologies to the Atkins family. You have this corner here. Look, it's not super open, but you have a shot to make it happen. And I would have, you know, in a perfect world, wish he would have got this one off before he got contacted. Like right here, just, just toss it up there. Give him a 50-50 ball. If they pick it off, it's fourth down. Like this whole play was meant to go to the left-hand side. So Watson's eyes were exactly where they're supposed to be. And like, if you throw that to Atkins, you give him some, some air under it. Look, it's going to be a contested catch, but he might come down with it. That was your only really hope there on that play. But honestly, it should have never came down to it. Um, because you should have never, you should have never had to snap debacle with, uh, Nick Harris. And for whatever reason, Nick Harris bungled that snap. Um, there was something going on with the snap all game. So I can only imagine that there was some kind of frustration there, uh, involved in that. But overall, 
I'm encouraged by this. I'm very encouraged. I'm more encouraged than I was after the week two game. The week two game was him executing some very basic stuff. This was like, okay, evidence that he is capable of still executing some higher level stuff and still proce uh, processing at a higher level here, right? You saw some of that. Like this did look closer uh, or at least the closest Deshaun has looked like from a tape standpoint to Houston Texans, Deshaun Watson. Now he's still a far off from that, but this is really good. Um, and hopefully a sign of what's to come with him. Because if you get this quarterback play, you get David and Joku back, you get Nick Chubb back, you can start to feel a lot more optimistic about the Browns chances for the rest of the season. If you can get this kind of play from Deshaun consistently, but this was a good game from him. No doubt about it. I would even say it's a great game after looking at the tape, but y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below. Have a great day. Have a better night. Peace.